You guys asked for it, so today I'm going to show you my custom black and gray McFarlane style Batman action figure. I'll show you how I put him together, how I improve the articulation, how he scales with other figures, and just how many simoleons it'll set you back to make one of your very own. Our journey begins in the fall of 1993 with the release of Batman the Animated Series. I still remember being a kid in Walmart seeing Combat Belt Batman for the first time. On the show there were blue highlights, but this figure was all black and gray. Black and gray with a deep, almost marigold yellow. Don't get me wrong, I still love the bright blue and gray from the Super Powers era, but this became my de facto Batman color scheme. Like many a collector and customizer, I saw three Jokers as the conduit to get that Batman I've always wanted. And while I could have simply painted the trunks black, it just was never enough for me personally. Although I did like the Keaton-like accents of this figure, I just didn't want it for my comic version. Enter the black and gray version of Hush. To my eye, he had the best comic book head sculpt we've ever gotten from McFarlane Toys. Leastways for this style of articulation. This figure had smooth, non-ribbed hands, and most importantly for my purposes, comic style boots. He had black trunks, but unfortunately also had a pouch belt, which, while I do like for the Hush design, isn't quite what I wanted for my tribute to this. At last, with the arrival of the Batman and Spawn 2 pack, I finally had the last piece of the puzzle. The belt and trunks were exactly what I was looking for. In fact, I knew they were what I was looking for because they were simply reused from year two. Combining the head, gloves, and boots from Hush along with the three Joker's body and the belt and trunks from the Spawn 2 pack, I finally had my perfect Batman. Just look at those deep matching golds and grays. Most of this was a matter of just simple part swaps, but not all of it. By far the most challenging thing were the boots. To get these boots on these legs required boiling. Lots of boiling. 40 minutes of boiling. Here's what the hush legs look like with the boots pulled off. What surprised me was that the three Joker's legs are actually different and had to be whittled down. As such, my custom is a little bit shorter. It's only about an eighth of an inch, but as we'll see in the comparison section, it really does make a difference. Having boiled and whittled, I use Loctite to combine the boots with the legs. Unfortunately, in my hubris, I put the wrong boots on the wrong calves and had to do it all over again. And I mean all over over again with a new set of legs. Just note that if you're gonna do this, use a pot you don't care about. After 80 minutes of boiling action figures, mine is a little bit worse for wear. Even so, I am overjoyed with the results, and just wait till I show you the modifications I made to the articulation. At this point, I think the only other improvement I could make would be a cloth goods cape, but I really like how the sculpted folds fit around the shoulders. If I were gonna go with a cloth goods cape, I'd probably take one from Detective Comics 27. Not only do I just really like this cape, but it also has this really nice collar piece to hold it in place. Moving on to pose ability, and while you might think that you know what this body does, I've actually made a few modifications there as well. From the top, and my first tweak was the head articulation. This style of Batman has a ball joint in the base of the neck instead of a dumbbell joint in the base of the skull. Using a Dremel, I carved out an extra groove. Without modification, this is how far a standard Hush Batman can look up. With modification, mine can look up this far. I'd say that's a night and day difference. A dark night and day difference. Additionally, he can bury the chin. And notice that I kept my carving low enough that you can't see it when you put his head down. Otherwise, and of course he gets tilt and all the way around. Moving down and I haven't done anything with the arms. If I switch out to a cloth goods cave though, he'll probably get just a little bit higher. Otherwise, we've got a rotator cuff, bicep swivel, double jointed elbow, and McFarlane styrus balls that can swivel and hinge either up and down or side to side. Hmm, a little bit of a tag sticking out there I should clip off. Shifting to the torso and Batman has a diaphragm joint and a dumbbell waist. And this was my biggest modification in the articulation of this figure. I've made no secret about my frustration with the lack of forward hunch on these diaphragm joints. Similar to the head, I went in and I dremeled an extra groove moving forward. I also did that down here. That way we'd be getting a better crunch top and bottom. He can arch back this far, but just look at that hunch forward. Side 
side by side with a non-modified figure and there is no comparison. Additionally, if you angle it just right, that tilt forward creates a pretty great twist as well. Below the utility belt and Batman has a typical McFarlane hips. Looks like I need to glue that. You can kick this high and split this wide. Additionally, that 40 minutes of boiling really softened up the twist. Moving down the leg, he has double jointed knee, toe articulation, and ankle balls that can swivel, hinge, and pivot. Of course, I'm sure what you're the most curious about is how this slightly shorter Batman scales with others. For some back comparisons and for a couple of black and gray options, and here we have Rebirth and the original Undoctored Three Jokers, while for a couple of blue and gray options, here we have Nightfall and Hush. Speaking of Hush and moving over to the Man of Tomorrow, and here we have Hush and Action Comics 1000 versions of Superman, I am very pleased with how well all these scale together. For a couple of other options though, and here we have DC Classic and Crisis on on Infinite Earths. While we're here, I recently got a request to see the Earth 2 shorts on the classic Superman body. Admittedly, they're a little bit large and a little bit loose, but the colors are a perfect match, and this really does have that classic Superman feel. As long as we're talking about kit bashes, I did get a request to bring out my Superman, so here you go. This combines Hush with the Atomic Skull 2 pack and the hands from Shazam Fury of the Gods. I gotta say, I am very happy with these two side by side. Standing just a hair taller than Batman is the Collector Edition Wonder Woman. For your consideration though, and here we have Rebirth and Flashpoint versions of the Flash, as well as JLA Aquaman and Endless Winter Aquaman with the Flashpoint alternate Barry Allen head. Next, and for a couple of Hal's Jordan, and here we have the Dawnbreaker 2 pack and the Silver Age digital version, but for some JLA love, and here we have Kyle Rayner. From the Justice League to the Bat Family, and here we have Mattel and DC Multiverse versions of Damian Wayne, as well as Mattel and Multiverse versions versions of Tim Drake. Also, if you're wondering, I have not forgotten about my custom of this guy. For the grown-up version of the second Robin, Jason Todd, and here we have New 52 and Three Jokers versions of the Red Hood, as well as Better Than Batman and Titans versions of Nightwing. Knowing that Dick is the go-to for filling in for Bruce, I think the Better Than Batman version right here is fine. For a couple of Batgirls though, and here we have the Three Jokers Barbara and the Dark exclusive Cassandra Kane. For one of the most important members of the Bat family, however, and here we have the Mattel version of Alfred. But don't worry, a custom McFarlane scaled version is on my to-do list. That said, the most exciting part of a Batman discussion is the villains. Starting off strong with Joker, and here we have Rebirth and Mortal Kombat 11, and my kit bash combining the clown with Death of the Family. Otherwise, and while I await the Collector Edition, here we have the Arkham City version of Penguin. Not gonna lie, he does have a pretty strong Batman the Animated Series vibe. As for Catwoman, here we have Arkham City and the Platinum Edition Nightfall. I chose the Platinum Edition for this comparison section because the great costume is a lot more like Batman the Animated Series. Next up are classic and Arkham City versions of the Riddler, Arkham City Ra's al Ghul, and Arkham Origins and Rebirth versions of Deathstroke. For some larger than life villains, and here we have Man Bat, the single issue Clayface, Arkham Asylum, Killer Croc, and Bane. From big to small and we come full circle back to where it all began with Combat Belt Batman by Kenner. For a relative scale comparison, here's my Batman with Pizza Spidey and the Spectacular Spider-Man. And as always, here he is with Stealth Iron Man. For a classic Justice League, I tend to prefer a blue and gray Batman, though I could see mine working pretty well for JLA. In general though, I think I mostly see this figure as the head of my Batman family. As of this recording, both three Jokers and Hush are readily available online for about $20, with the Spawn 2-pack retailing for $50. I got my extra Spawn 2-pack Batman loose on eBay for $30, bucks, so if you're patient and look around, deals do exist, and don't be afraid to shop around for loose versions of the other figures you need. Otherwise, and at retail, this custom could set you back as much as a hundred dollars. This is a pretty awesome Batman, but that's still a pretty penny. Especially since McFarlane just came out with a black and gray version of Nightfall. That, however, is a conversation for another day. If you like this video, check out one of these. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice and have fun.